Four years ago, I came to this very spot in Fort Meade, Florida to tell you a story about Florida citrus. It was actually the first episode of this show I ever made. Since then, Florida citrus groves have gone from a peak of about a million acres of grove land to about a half a million. This is what's left of much of it. The good news is there is a phoenix rising from these ashes. Come on. Let me take you where the food comes from. This could be the future of Florida citrus. For the last 20 years, there's been a lethal disease called HLB, Huang Long Bing. Around here, they just call it citrus greening disease and probably some other things we can't say on TV. What it's done is it's spread by a little bug. Once a grove is infected, you got about two years before the entire grove is infected. There's no cure. There's some different treatments. There's some ways to fight it off. But over the last two decades, Florida citrus has gone from a million acres of grove land to under 500,000. Right now, what I'm holding in my hand has huge promise for the future of Florida citrus because this was grown indoors. Stephen, where we're standing looks almost like a war-torn scene of devastation and destruction. This is what is left of a legacy Florida citrus grove that was planted probably 50 or 60 years ago. It's been in production. What's happening right now on this particular property? Citrus greening has killed them, made them unproductive. So you have to uh, basically come in with a front end loader, uh, push the trees over, burn them, prepare the ground, disc it, smooth it out, and then uh, we'll take it to, to the next level. So Florida citrus growers have had to make and keep having to make decisions, fight or quit, fight or quit, fight or quit. We came to see you four years ago now. This grove, I guess, was probably still a working grove. It was. Even then, yeah. just four years ago. Yeah. And now we look at what it has become and, and what it's becoming. You guys decided to fight. You're doing it in some really, really unique ways. In fact, I believe once this land is cleared out, it's going to become a citrus grove again. It is, but a different type of citrus a grove. A very different type <laughs> yeah. of citrus grove. I think we need to go see why, because frankly, it's starting to make me all a little bit depressed. Right, <laughs> Let's no, go see we'll, something pretty. What do you say? Yeah, we can do that. Let's go find it. All it's right, got to so. be out of this mess somewhere here. We went through the pole farm where it looks for all the world like you're growing poles right. for harvest. This is what those poles turn into. This is a citrus grove. It, it may not look like any citrus grove people have seen before, but right behind this door is a real life, honest to goodness citrus grove. We gotta go look at this, come on. That's right. All right, let's, let's go. Do it. Wow. This is hard to believe, Steve. It is. It is a citrus grove. How big is this? This is this is incredible. It's vast. Yeah, it, it's around 10 acres. 10 spring. acres, it looks like a hunter. Yeah, it does. I mean, that vista, it goes all the way to the horizon. It looks like, it seems like we're just outdoors on a little bit of a cloudy day. The trees here were planted one week ago. A whole so week. They, so they are they are truly babies. Wow. Yeah, that's it. And these are red grapefruit. Red grapefruit. Now, mm -hmm. grapefruit is uh, 
crop in Florida that's really declined in popularity over the years. For some people, tastes have changed, uh, but it's a variety of citrus that is very, very vulnerable to this greening disease. That's right, it is. It's one of the most uh, susceptible varieties to the disease, so you've seen plantings lessen over the years for uh -huh. that reason. How many different varieties of citrus do you guys grow? How much is part of your program? Well, I mean, it's really three main categories. We grow oranges, we grow grapefruit, and we grow tangerines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within those, those categories, there's numerous varieties from early season to mid season to late season. Now I see, I still see trees planted outside. I still see groves outside. I see little trees planted outside. Right. Our growers are still planting groves on the outside. Mm -hmm. We're expanding our indoor, our cups plantings right now. And I just think it's uh, one of the tools that we have to manage disease. Screen diffuses the light. It provides a better quality light for the trees. These are happy trees. So, you know, they, they're, they're growing about two and a half times faster than you'll uh, grow in just a traditional outdoor really? grove. Two and a half times. We plant them at a higher density per acre. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this 10 acre structure you have about 3,500 trees. Wow. So we are coming into production earlier than you would on an outdoor grove um, and then the tree is so happy and so healthy that it produces more fruit per acre than you would in traditional growing methods. So you're actually maximizing and enhancing. You're going to be able to produce more fruit. It's also going to be of a better quality and it's going to be near perfect. We know when we're farming outdoors, especially in a state like Florida that has all kinds of crazy weather that can make fruit maybe not be as attractive as some of its California cousins, what's coming out of here, I would guess, just about has to be perfect. It takes a lot of effort to make it perfect, but the screen enclosure will shield and block some of the wind. And you know, one of the main defects you would have on Florida citrus being the, you know, the windy climate that we have mm -hmm. is wind scarring. Well, these are the babies. Can we go look at some of the big ones? Uh, I'm excited to Let's see Let's go see them. Let's go see this. Stephen, this is what I remember a Florida citrus grove looking like. When I was a kid, this is what they all lush and green and beautiful and bursting with fruit. I say when I was a kid, but also in my 20s and my 30s and my 40s. This is what it looked like. This is not what we see outdoors anymore. This is where everything that we've seen from the grove that's coming down to the moonscape, to the pole farm, to the baby trees. This is the whole point, right? Your idea here, being under this cover in this screen enclosure, keep the bad bugs out. But in farming, a lot of times we need good bugs. There's beneficial insects. How would you get the beneficial insects in here if you're keeping the bad insects out? Well, you can introduce beneficial insects and release them you know, in the environment and uh -huh. keep them in here. So you, you, you can do that. Um, another one as far as pollination, you know, bees. Yeah. We choose varieties that are self-fertile. They do not require pollination. <laughs> what? So that's, uh, that's what we're doing. So you're telling me the birds and the bees have absolutely nothing to do with what's going on in here. Not so much in here. This is just spectacular. It's, it's awesome for me to be here four years down the road and see this literally coming to fruition. What's grown under here goes for fresh fruit because often in Florida, what you grow is not commercially appealing to the eye enough to sell fresh as a pretty piece of fruit. Everything you're growing in here is gorgeous. Yeah, Florida's known for having the highest quality, best tasting fruit that you can buy, the juiciest fruit that you can buy. Right. But we're a subtropical climate. Sure. Subtropical climate, you have winds, you have pest uh, pressures, so it's always been difficult to have that um, perfect, impeccable exterior look to the fruit. Now, not in here. Not in here. Not in here. We've been talking about all this stuff all day long. We haven't even tried any of it. Can we pick one off? Absolutely. I'd Where? be offended if you didn't. There's some good ones over there, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, let's take a look. Find us one. How about this one? That work for you? You're the boss, man. All you right. would know. Yeah, let's take a if look. If you say it's good, I'm going to go with what you think. So, look, there's not a blemish on it, man. Beautiful piece of fruit. Not a scratch. It's pinking it up over here. Look starting at the juice to blush. running out. Chip. It is literally look pouring. At look at that. Look at the inside oh, of that. Wow. 
Isn't that beautiful? That is. That is just classic, man. That is just classic. That deep red color in there. Proof is always in the pudding. Try a bite of that. Mm. People who don't think they like grapefruit. <laughs> Would like this grapefruit. <laughs> I want to try that. Yeah. Mm. Look, th this is Florida, Chip. Holy crow. I think you even got me with a good spirit. I tried. That one. Need a little something to pour in there, though. That's right. <laughs> mm. I'm carrying this the rest of the way. Good. Let's go see him packing it up. Let's though. do it. Okay. Stephen, it was really remarkable seeing what we saw this morning. It's almost like we went from hopeless to bright hope of the future, and we just went about a quarter mile. We've had to adapt and, and, and create custom equipment to build the structures. We've had to get very, very creative on our equipment that does the care inside the structures, not just in the mowing and, and doing the cultivation mm -hmm. inside, but also the harvesting equipment. Everything is different and customized for, for cups. And once that fruit is harvested, it's, it's rushed to the packing house. Um, where it's uh, washed. Um, there's a coating of, of uh, food grade wax put mm -hmm. on the outside to you know, help preserve moisture and maintain the freshness and of course gives it that nice, nice shine. Uh, it's packaged in boxes, it's packaged in bags and uh, as you saw today when we reached the packing house there's a, there is a line of customers trucks waiting to get the product to take it to uh, major supermarket chains, uh, food service, um, wholesale produce markets. So Stephen, we're back at one of your packing houses now. This one's in, I think we're in Lake Hamilton, Florida. That's right. And this grapefruit that I'm holding in my hand this morning, and you can look at this, and that is as perfect a piece of fruit as you will ever see. So this is how new, this is how modern this industry is. This is a piece of fruit that was picked Today, the Dundee Co-op, quite a bit older than that. Tell us the history of that. Yeah, so we were established in 1924. Wow. So this is our, we're entering our 100th season right. uh, in business. So we're, we're very excited about being around for so long and, you know, maintaining reputation and, and uh, within the industry and in the trade. There were literally hundreds of different citrus labels that came out of this state. Instead of banding together, a lot of people just did their own and they had, in, in fact, it's kind of a collector's thing. I know people who actually collect old orange crate labels and old orange crates, but Dundee as a co-op, these are growers who all came together mm -hmm. starting a hundred years ago to represent themselves and have an ownership stake and what they were doing and what their future was without having to stand alone. So we're a grower-owned cooperative and over 200 grower members wow. is who we represent. And we represent them in the harvesting, the packaging, and the marketing of their fruit. And it's just that, it's what you said. The growers could not do themselves alone what they could do collectively by joining our, our cooperative. Mm -hmm. Now that fruit comes to market under the Florida Classic Growers label. That's our mainstay label that, that we've had for years and years and years and you know most of the folks um, you know, will see that in the supermarkets. Now that said <laughs> I'm looking at this sticker and right here it says rubies. Stephen what's up with that? Yeah yeah it's, that's a good point. So rubies uh, came about as we started developing our citrus under protective screen. Mm -hmm. We were doing it differently. We were growing the fruit differently, um, growing it in an environmentally friendly way. So uh, we're launching a new product line, uh, Eco Grown Citrus by Dundee. And under that product line, uh, we have our, our Ruby's brand that you just pointed out on, on that fruit for our grapefruit. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Sunny's brand that's gonna be for our Mandarin varieties. And the reason we chose a different brand is that uh, it, it is different. We're growing it differently. 
Um, this is something that that really hasn't been done commercially in the in the state right. uh, or or in the country. Proud of it, and we wanted to showcase that with it, with its own brand. So when people go to the supermarket, if they see Florida Classic Growers, that's you. Yes. If they see Rubies, that's you. And on those little cute, easy peeling mandarin citrus fruits, what's the name of it going to be? Sunnies. Sunnies. So that's how they'll know to connect it to here. Um, we're growing more with less. Mm -hmm. We're using less land. We're using less water. We're losing, using less fertilizer to produce this fruit. So it has a, you know, a really great sustainable um, story behind it. And it's a great ecological footprint as well. That's right. That said, over the last 20 years, Florida has gone from about a million acres of working citrus grove land to under 500,000. The value of the crop has remained remarkably high. I'm sure that has a lot to do with increased yield per acreage, increased density of plantings, uh, increasing prices for demand. We've been in a state where historically 95% of the fruit has gone for juicing. Things like this, when you've got beautiful eating fruit like that, that's a little bit of a game changer when you can actually bring fresh fruit to the market. That's more profitable for the grower, I would assume. As, as we look at that, we understand we still see citrus trees outside. Mm -hmm. You really can't take a big net and put it over the whole state. How do you decide what goes undercover, what doesn't go undercover? You know, and it's, uh, it's a new way of growing for Florida. Mm -hmm. So we don't have all the answers. Um, we are focusing undercover mainly with um, grapefruit and mandarin varieties. Uh, we are still aggressively planting uh, orange varieties on traditional outdoor mm -hmm. groves. And we're trialing new varieties. We have a brand new uh, variety trial citrus under protective screen project mm -hmm. going in the ground right now. And, and we'll be trialing you know, dozens of new varieties to see what will work and what else can we produce undercover. And that's gonna span lemons and limes and specialty fruits and wow. different mandarins and different types of grapefruit. So and, you're telling and me oranges. we gotta come back and, and, gotta and come do back. an yep. We gotta keep coming back. And you know, there's very active plant breeding programs right. that are taking place right now. And University of Florida, several other big name companies. Who USDA. Have just, you, yeah have their own testing facilities. Right. And there's some promising stuff in the ground yet, but no solution yet. No solution yet, and, and breeding takes time. Yeah. It takes decades to try to find a plant that's tolerant. And once you find a tolerant plant, does that plant produce the quality of fruit you need? Does it produce the quantity of fruit that you need? Does it taste the, good that does somebody taste good? wants to take no, home and right. eat it? And can you plant it in, um, profitably? Right. For your next modern innovation, you reached way back into the old Florida catalog. You're doing Florida gift fruit. We are. Florida gift fruit's been a big piece of our operation for years. Um, we've got a well-established uh, gift fruit business and you know the, the customers, we ship right to their, their doorsteps. Mm -hmm. And you know during the fall and the winter time when the weather's not so nice up north, and it's pretty nice Send in Florida. That gift of Florida sunshine. Florida sunshine, and, and people people love it. It's it's a great, healthy, nutritious um, gift of sunshine. And growing this citrus under cover gives you a fruit that's not just delicious; it's also beautiful. It's the kind of thing you're proud to give somebody. Yeah, probably even prouder to get. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I know necessity is what drives all of this, and you'd probably prefer to never, ever, ever have to talk about greening or anything else again, but I think the reality is, is when the greening problem is solved, and we're going to look up a little bit further down the road, and you know it's going to be something else knocking on the door, Stephen. It's always something else. That's for sure. You can you can count on that. I think they call that farming, don't they? That is farming. <laughs> One challenge after the next. <laughs> 101. We are in the Gift Fruit Center. You've got new weapons now, new material, all this beautiful citrus grown undercover. This Gift Fruit program, this classic Florida, getting that gift of sunshine yes. from Florida in the wintertime. This is a really special part of what you do, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be able to provide those iconic gifts. It is something that a lot of people look forward to every year. 
We want to be able to provide a nice variety, something for everyone. So we partner with a lot of other family farms to provide us those other okay, items. Okay, so that's the sourcing, mm -hmm. that's the secret. You're not yep. going to, I won't name a giant retailer, let's just say one that rhymes with small mark, but you're not going and just no. picking things off the shelf. Mm -hmm. These are actually grown by other farmers and made by other craftsmen mm -hmm. who care as much as you do. Absolutely, we try to support those businesses. We want to work with like kind businesses and support the local community in whatever way we can. I gotta tell you what I love. Uh, on the other side of this wall right here, mm -hmm. there's a room full of telephone operators. They are sitting there waiting to answer your questions and help you pick out the perfect gift. You could have that call center right there in some other country somewhere mm -hmm. and save a lot of money Good. Something tells me that's not what it's about for y'all. It's about quality and it's about having the freshest product available to give to our customers. It's about that legacy. It's about that history. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to pick up a phone and I can do it right now. Yes, you can. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It is. It is. We're very proud of, of what we have here. You know, Florida is one of my favorite places to film. Number one, it's always warm. Number two, it's one of those rare states that manages to hold on to the best of the old while still adopting the new and not being afraid to try something different. If it's classic and not broken, they don't fix it. If they can make it better, they do out here where the food comes from.